Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I have gathered three horror stories for you to listen to. I hope you enjoy them. If you love stories like these, please give us a like. And if you want to support the channel, please subscribe. Thank you so much for all the support. Now, on with the stories. So, I've got this weird story from when I used to work the night shift at this old hotel on the outskirts of town. The place wasn't exactly a five-star establishment, more like a worn-down building that had seen better days back in the 80s. But hey, it paid the bills, and I didn't have much going on at the time. My job was pretty simple. I was the night receptionist, which basically meant I sat at the front desk from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., checked in the occasional late guest, and made sure no one trashed the place. Most nights were uneventful, and I'd spend hours scrolling through my phone or watching whatever late-night show was on the tiny TV behind the counter. One night, around 2 a.m., I was battling to keep my eyes open when the phone rang. It startled me because, honestly, who calls a hotel at this hour? I picked up, and there was this raspy voice on the other end. Room 303, can you send up some towels? The voice said. Sure thing, I replied automatically, even though something felt off. We didn't have a room 303. The hotel only had two floors, and the rooms were numbered up to 220. Um, could you repeat that room number? I asked. Room 303, the voice insisted, a bit more impatient this time. I figured maybe I misheard or the guy was drunk. Sir, we don't have a room 303 in this hotel. Silence. Then the line disconnected. I shrugged it off, thinking someone was playing a prank or had the wrong number. About half an hour later, the phone rang again. Same number on the caller ID. I hesitated but picked up. Front desk, how can I help you? Why haven't you brought the towels? The voice demanded, sounding more irritated. Sir, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have a room 303. Are you sure you're calling the right hotel? He chuckled, but there was no humor in it. Oh, I'm in the right place. Maybe you should come up and see for yourself. Then he hung up again. Now I was creeped out. I checked the reservation system to see if any guests might be messing with me. But only a few rooms were occupied and none of them were on the non-existent third floor. I decided to do a quick walk around the hotel, partly to shake off the eerie feeling and partly to make sure everything was okay. Armed with my flashlight and the master key, I started on the first floor, checking the hallways and peering out the windows into the dimly lit parking lot. Everything was normal until I reached the second floor. As I climbed the stairs, I felt this sudden drop in temperature. It was odd because it was the middle of summer, and the AC on that floor was always spotty. I rubbed my arms and continued down the hallway, the old carpet muffling my footsteps. About halfway down, I noticed that the door to room 210 was slightly ajar. That was strange because I was pretty sure no one was staying in that room. I approached the door cautiously. Hello? Anyone there? I called out softly. No response. I pushed the door open and flicked on the lights. The room was empty, but the bed was unmade, and the towels were strewn across the floor. It looked like someone had left in a hurry. I decided to check the bathroom, just to be thorough. As I stepped inside, I heard the sound of dripping water. The faucet was tightly closed, but droplets fell steadily from the shower head. I pulled back the shower curtain, half expecting someone to be hiding there, but it was empty. That's when I noticed something that made my skin crawl. Written on the steamed up mirror were the words, Room 303, and an arrow pointing upwards. I stumbled back, heart pounding. This had to be some elaborate prank, maybe one of my buddies messing with me. But none of them knew I was working tonight. I decided I'd had enough and headed back to the front desk. As I hurried down the hallway, the lights above me started flickering. Great, just what I needed. When I reached the lobby, the phone was ringing again. I didn't want to answer it, but I couldn't just ignore it. With a deep breath, I picked up. Front desk, I managed to say. You should have brought the towels, the voice hissed. Listen here, whoever you are, this isn't funny anymore. I'm going to call the cops, I snapped. He laughed, a chilling sound that echoed in my ears even after he hung up. I decided to call my manager, Mr. Thompson. Groggy and annoyed, he answered after several rings. I explained the situation, but he dismissed it as a prank. Probably some kids messing around. Just keep an eye on things and we'll check the security cameras in the morning. 
he said before hanging up. Frustrated, I sank back into my chair. Maybe he was right. Maybe it was just some local teens with nothing better to do. Another hour passed without incident, and I started to relax. Just as I was about to settle back into my routine, the elevator doors across the lobby dinged and slid open. My heart skipped a beat. No one had used the elevator all night, and I hadn't seen anyone come in. I stared at the open elevator, half expecting someone to step out, but it was empty. Then, the elevator display above the doors caught my eye. The digital numbers were glitching, flashing erratically before settling on three. There was no third floor. Curiosity and fear battled within me, but against my better judgment, I decided to check it out. I stepped into the elevator and pressed the button for the second floor, just to see what would happen. The doors closed and the elevator began to ascend, but instead of stopping at the second floor, it kept going. The display still showed three. The elevator jerked to a halt and the doors opened to a dimly lit hallway I'd never seen before. The air was thick and a musty smell filled my nostrils. I stepped out cautiously. The wallpaper was peeling and the carpet was stained and worn. Doors lined the hallway, each numbered in tarnished brass, 301, 302, 303. The door to room 303 was slightly open, a sliver of darkness beckoning me. Every instinct screamed at me to turn back, but I felt drawn to it. As I approached, a cold breeze swept through the hallway. I pushed the door open. The room was shrouded in shadows, but I could make out a figure standing by the window. Hello? I whispered. The figure turned slowly. It was a man, his face pale and eyes sunken. He wore an old-fashioned bellhop uniform, frayed at the edges. I've been waiting for those towels, he said, grinning to reveal teeth that were unnaturally sharp. I stumbled backward, my heart hammering in my chest. The door slammed shut behind me and the lights flickered out. In the darkness, I heard footsteps approaching. I fumbled for the doorknob, but it wouldn't budge. Stay a while the voice whispered right next to my ear. I screamed and pounded on the door. Suddenly, it flew open and I fell into the hallway. Scrambling to my feet, I sprinted back to the elevator. The doors were mercifully open and I slammed the button for the lobby. As the elevator descended, I could hear distant laughter echoing above me. When the doors opened, I bolted out and didn't stop until I was outside, gulping in the cool night air. I quit that night. Didn't even bother to tell Mr. Thompson in person. I just left him a voicemail and never looked back. A few weeks later, out of morbid curiosity, I searched for any history on that hotel. Turns out, back in the 1950s, there was a fire that destroyed the third floor, and a bellhop died trying to save guests. The third floor was never rebuilt, and eventually the place was renovated into the two-story building where I'd worked. To this day, I still get chills thinking about it. I don't know what I saw or how any of it was possible, but I know one thing for sure. I'm never working the night shift again. All right, so this happened about two years ago when I was working the night shift at this small town hospital. I was a security guard and the gig was usually pretty boring. Just me making rounds, sipping bad coffee and scrolling through my phone to stay awake. One night, around 2 a.m., I was doing my usual patrol when I noticed that one of the patient rooms on the third floor had its door slightly open. Now, this floor was under renovation, so it was supposed to be completely empty. Thinking maybe one of the construction guys left something behind, I decided to check it out. I pushed the door open and flipped the light switch, but nothing happened. The room stayed dark. My flashlight's beam cut through the darkness, revealing an empty hospital bed and some covered equipment. Just as I was about to leave, I heard a faint rustling noise coming from the corner. Hello? Anyone there? I called out. No response. I stepped further inside, and that's when I saw it. A shadowy figure standing by the window. It looked like a woman with long hair. Her back turned to me. Ma'am, you shouldn't be here. This floor is closed, I said. She didn't move or say anything. Feeling a bit creeped out, I approached her slowly. Are you all right? I asked. 
She turned her head slightly, and in the dim light I could see half her face. It was pale and expressionless, but her eyes, they were just empty. Before I could react, she vanished. Like, one moment she was there, and the next, she was gone. I stood there, heart pounding, trying to rationalize what I'd just seen. Maybe it was a trick of the light, or my tired mind playing games. I decided to head back to my desk and try to shake it off. As I walked down the hallway, the lights above me started flickering. Great, just what I needed. I picked up my pace and then all the lights went out completely. The hallway was plunged into darkness. I pulled out my flashlight again and tried to radio into maintenance, but the radio was just static. That's when I heard footsteps behind me, slow, dragging footsteps. I spun around, shining my light down the corridor, but it was empty. Who's there? I shouted. No answer. The footsteps started again, this time accompanied by a faint whispering. I couldn't make out any words, but it sounded like multiple voices overlapping. I noped out of there and headed for the stairwell. As I descended, I heard the door above me slam open, followed by those same footsteps. Now faster. I bolted down the stairs, almost tripping over my own feet. When I reached the ground floor, the lights were flickering here too. The whole hospital seemed deserted, which didn't make sense. There should have been nurses and staff around. I made my way to the security office, but the door was locked. My keycard wasn't working. The whispering grew louder, seeming to come from all around me. Panicking, I decided to head to the ER area. Surely someone would be there. But as I walked through the corridors, all I found were empty rooms and abandoned stations. Suddenly, I heard a child giggling. It echoed through the hallway, sending chills down my spine. Hello? I called out, my voice shaky. A small figure darted across the hallway up ahead. It looked like a little boy in a hospital gown. I hesitated but decided to follow. Hey, kid! You shouldn't be here alone. I turned the corner, and there he was, standing at the end of the hallway. He looked normal except for his eyes. They were completely black. He pointed at me and whispered, you're not supposed to be here. My throat went dry. What do you mean? I managed to ask. This place isn't for the living, he said, and then he vanished just like the woman earlier. At this point, I was thoroughly freaked out. I tried the exit doors, but they were door and warm. That wouldn't budge. The electronic locks were unresponsive. I pulled out my phone to call someone, anyone, but I had no signal. The overhead PA system crackled to life, emitting a high-pitched screech that made me cover my ears. Then, a distorted voice came through, repeating the same phrase over and over. Return to room 294. Room 294, that was the room where I first saw the woman. Against my better judgment, I felt this inexplicable pull to go back there. It was like my feet were moving on their own. When I reached the third floor, the door to room 294 was wide open, light spilling out into the hallway. I walked in, and the room was completely different. It was brightly lit, and there were people, patients, and doctors going about their business as if nothing was wrong. I tried to talk to them, but no one acknowledged me. It was like I was invisible. Then I saw her again, the woman from before. She was lying in the hospital bed, eyes closed, looking peaceful. A doctor approached her bed and started talking to a nurse. Time of death, 2.03 a.m., he said solemnly. I stared in disbelief. Was I witnessing a replay of past events? Suddenly, the woman sat up and turned to look directly at me. Join us, she whispered. I stumbled backward, and the room around me started to warp and fade. The walls melted away, and I found myself in a dark, empty space. The whispering voices returned, louder and more aggressive. Shadows moved around me, closing in. In a desperate attempt, I yelled, I don't belong here! Everything stopped. The shadows receded, and I was standing alone in the hospital lobby. Lights were on, and I could hear the normal sounds of the hospital. Machines beeping, distant conversations footsteps. I checked my watch. It was 2.05 a.m. Only a couple of minutes had passed, but it felt like hours. 
I went straight to my supervisor and told him everything. He gave me a concerned look and said, You're not the first to experience strange things during the night shift. This place has a history. He explained that the hospital was built over what used to be an old asylum and that there were rumors of it being haunted. I quit that job the next day. I couldn't shake the feeling that if I stayed, I might not make it out alive. To this day, I still get chills whenever I pass by that hospital. Sometimes I think I see that woman standing in one of the windows, watching me as I drive by. I gotta tell you about something that happened to me a couple months back when I was working the night shift at this storage facility on the edge of town. You know the one, big, creepy place with endless rows of units. I thought it was gonna be an easy gig, just me and a bunch of locked doors. Turns out I was way off. So it was a Tuesday night, around 11 p.m., and the place was dead quiet. My job was to do rounds every couple of hours, make sure everything was locked up and no one was sneaking around. I was sitting in the tiny office, sipping bad coffee and flipping through channels on this old TV that barely got any reception. Around midnight, I headed out for my patrol. The corridors between the storage units were lit by these dim, flickering lights that made everything look like a scene from a horror movie. I was used to it by then, but that night felt... different. As I walked past Unit 112, I heard a faint thud from inside. I stopped and listened but everything went silent again. Probably just something settling, I thought. But as I started to walk away, I heard it again. Thud. I knocked on the door of the unit. Hello? Anyone in there? No response. I checked the lock, and it was still secured. Maybe something fell over inside. People store all kinds of junk, right? I shrugged it off and continued my rounds. When I got back to the office, I glanced at the security monitors. Most of them were showing empty hallways but then I noticed something on the feed for Corridor B, the corridor where Unit 112 was. There was a figure standing in the middle of the hallway. I leaned in closer, trying to make out any details, but the camera quality was terrible. It looked like a tall person wearing a long coat, just standing there, not moving. I picked up the radio and called out, Hey, this is security. Can I help you with something? No answer. The figure didn't move. I decided I'd better go check it out. Grabbing my flashlight, I headed back to Corridor B. When I got there, the hallway was empty. I walked over to Unit 112 and shined my light around. Nothing seemed out of place. Maybe the camera was glitching. As I turned to head back, I felt a rush of cold air, like someone had opened a freezer door behind me. I spun around, and for a split second, I thought I saw a shadow dart out of sight at the far end of the corridor. Who's there? I called out trying to keep my voice steady. No response. Feeling creeped out, I hurried back to the office. On the monitors, Corridor B was empty again. I rewound the footage, but the figure was gone. The recording just showed static around the time I saw it. I decided to log the incident just in case. As I was typing it up, the monitor for Corridor D started flickering. I looked up to see the same figure standing in front of Unit 237, again not moving. This time, I didn't hesitate. I called the police. There's someone trespassing in the storage facility, I told them. They've been spotted in different corridors and I can't find them. The dispatcher said they'd send a patrol car over, but it might take a while since it wasn't an emergency. Great. I watched the monitors closely, tracking the figure as it moved from corridor to corridor. But every time I went to check, the hallway was empty. It was like the person only existed on the screens. Then, things got weirder. The lights in the corridors started flickering more intensely, and some of the cameras began switching to static one by one. An uneasy feeling settled in my stomach. Suddenly, all the monitors went black except for one, the feed for the main entrance. The figure was now standing right outside the office door, back turned toward the camera. My heart was pounding. The office door was locked, but the walls were thin, and there were windows. I grabbed the only thing that could resemble a weapon, a heavy flashlight, and waited. Minutes felt like hours. The figure on the monitor didn't move. It just stood there, motionless. Then slowly, it turned to face the camera. 
but instead of a face, there was just darkness under a hood. I heard a tap on the office door window. Tap, tap, tap. I didn't dare turn around. The tapping grew louder and more insistent. Tap, tap, tap. Who are you? What do you want? I shouted, my voice cracking. The tapping stopped. I glanced at the monitor. The figure was gone. I let out a shaky breath, thinking maybe it was over. But then, from behind me, a whisper. Leave. I whipped around, but no one was there. That's when the temperature in the room plummeted. I could see my breath forming small clouds in front of me. All of a sudden, the office door slammed open, even though it had been locked. A gust of freezing wind blew in, scattering papers everywhere. I'd had enough. I bolted out of there, sprinting toward the main gate. As I ran through the corridors, the lights above me were bursting, showering sparks down. Shadows danced along the walls, chasing me. I reached the gate and fumbled with the keys, my hands shaking uncontrollably. Behind me, I could hear footsteps getting closer, echoing loudly. I didn't look back. Finally, I got the gate open and stumbled outside just as a police car was pulling up. The officers got out and looked at me like I was crazy. Are you the one who called? One of them asked. Yes. There's someone. Or something in there. I gasped. They searched the facility while I waited by the car. After about half an hour, they came back. We didn't find anyone, they said. No signs of forced entry. No one on the premises. I couldn't believe it. I knew what I saw, or at least I thought I did. Maybe take the rest of the night off, one of the officers suggested. Get some rest. I didn't argue. I went straight home and tried to make sense of it all. The next day I quit the job. I didn't even bother going back for my last paycheck. A few weeks later, I heard that the storage facility had a fire in the middle of the night. They said it was caused by faulty wiring, but I couldn't help but wonder if it had anything to do with what I experienced. To this day, I have no idea who, or what, I saw during that night shift. All I know is that I'm never taking a job like that again. Sometimes, when I'm up late, I still hear that tapping sound, and it sends chills down my spine. So yeah, that's my story. Believe it or not, it happened. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Thank you for listening.